Yeti, my microphone. <clears throat> right, is everyone, is that my audio? Has everyone else got audio now? Yay, now they have sound. Hello? Test Hello. one two. Hello. <clears throat> right. ah. What what should I call you? Um Hello. How, how okay, to, there we go. Sound. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about the sound, yeah, that was my bad guys. Uh hey Spurs um <clears throat> not Hello? Just, just call me Do fight. You hear me? Yes, well, I can hear you. Just call me fight, okay? <laughs> call you fight. Okay. Yeah. Um sorry John, back to you. It should all be set up now, my bad. Well, now that it's all set up and people can hear all of us, welcome to the show. We are going to have what I'm expecting to be quite the dumpster fire tonight. Spurs, please prove me wrong for once. And for those who are unaware, we are doing this on Godless Engineers channel because apparently there are some childish asshats out there who have nothing better to do with their lives and are jealous of what is actually taking place. I need here. to interrupt. Uh, you do need to do the audio output too. I thought I'd done that. It says audio output capture. Okay. But, is, but is it moving and is it transmitting? It says yeah. it is. Okay. We're good then. Okay. Yeah. The, well, I mean, they say they can't hear me, so, or my audio is super low or something. All right. Uh, I'll put yours up. Yeah, that, that's uh, due to the delay. We're all good. I just check. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I can hear me. Uh, well, I mean, I can hear me fine. Right, no. so it, sh it should be all good. Right, sorry about that, guys. Anyway, back back to you <laughs> again. All right, and so with that, I am officially host, but also co-mod. The primary moderator for this will be Godless Engineer, and and our two combatants this evening. We have Spurs Chemo and Fight the Flat Earth. So with that, I will hand it over to John to go ahead and finish any introductions, ground rules, so even the audience knows exactly what to expect or not expect. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for that introduction for me. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here, especially our two debaters uh, tonight, um, which this was kind of a surprise thing that I'm going to be hosting it here on my channel. So I'm, I'm glad for that, but um, you know, we've got fight the flat earth and Sp spur Kismo. Is that right? Spurs. Kimo. Spurs. Chemo. Spurs. Kimo. Like, like cancer chemo. Okay. Got it. Um, spurs. Chemo. Uh, they are going to be hashing it out over whether or not the earth is flat. Uh, we don't really have a specific debate topic for tonight, but what I will say is, is that we're going to have a good clean debate. Uh, you guys try not to talk over each other. The, I'll give a little bit of leniency uh, for the back and forth. But uh, if I notice somebody is constantly interrupting the other person, I'll have to quiet everybody down and kind of reset us and whatnot and let you guys know that we're here to have a debate and not a yelling match over each other. Uh, so we're going to try to do that. I'm going to try my best to stay out of it for the most part. If I feel like there is a need for uh, moving the conversation along or trying to get a point made so that we can move on, uh, I will interject. But other than that, I'm going to let the two debatees uh, kind of uh, uh, um, talk. I believe we're planning on doing like a more formalized debate tonight, right? Yeah, I mean, I thought it'd be best if... Um... You know, we uh, give each of us have like five minutes to kind of give our opening arguments and then have a moderated back and forth. So, um, I mean, I'm more than happy for um, Spurs Chemo to, to go first. OK, uh, good. Uh, uh, so Spurs Chemo, can, he can go first. So uh, in, in uh, with that, with that in mind, um, let's try to keep it. Like uh, other than opening arguments, let's try to keep it to one point each time so that it's not turning into like a gish gallop so that each person can respond to mm -hmm. each thing. And uh, I'll try to keep us on track with that. Uh, but Spurs, Chemo, if you want to go on ahead and uh, start us off with uh, your first five minutes, uh, we will uh, I'll let you take it from there. Uh, yeah, okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, it's rather late, but uh, it's not a problem. Um, yeah, the shape of the earth. Uh, 
as far as I'm concerned, um, we observe flat. Uh, we see flat. Um, I don't see any reason to assume that the Earth is curving. Uh, I haven't seen any evidence for what you say is a curving Earth. And after the research that has happened in the last five, six years, um, overwhelming evidence to support the Earth being completely flat. Um, a number of things that will indicate that the Earth is flat, um, like the horizon. The horizon is um, a good a good way of seeing if uh, something is curving or not. Uh, we all know that if you go higher uh, on a ball, um, the horizon should drop away, should fall away. Um, and uh, on a flat Earth, uh, the it would extend stand out away from you. And um, these are just some of the key points um, as to why we understand the Earth is not a globe, and that it has to be uh, flat. Now, the true dimensions of that flat Earth are unknown because obviously we don't have the devices or the tools to make uh, those types of measurements. Um, we only have uh, at uh, our disposal um, assumptions and assuming things. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically that's, that's uh, it won't take five minutes. Um, that's just where, that's basically my stance, um, what I, how I understand it. Um, so yeah, so um, over to you. Uh, fight Did, flutter. Sorry, my bad. I turned that off. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, right. First off, I want to say thank you, Spurs, um, for jumping in at, at short notice because it was supposed to be Ali B yeah. originally. Thank so, you. Yeah. Um, right. Well, <clears throat> the reason that I think the Earth is a globe with a circumference of twenty-five thousand uh, miles, roughly, is because all the evidence points to that fact. Um, one of the the main things that I always go to is that you know, gravity is a thing that we know exists because there is a, a downward accelerating force of 9.8 meters per second squared, call it what you want, that does exist. And um, that, that force, that uh, natural fundamental part of nature makes everything a sphere because that's its natural lowest state of you know, um, energy and, and equilibrium to be a sphere. Um, <clears throat> That's because <clears throat> I have a knowledge of physics and, and the way that things would work. And that is the way that the evidence points me. And everyone always goes, um, well, you can't, you, you, know, you haven't done experiments yourself. You have, you didn't come up with that math yourself. And the, the fact is I don't need to. Science progresses because we stand on the shoulders of those that have come before us and have either proven what they're saying is right or wrong. And then we expand upon that knowledge. Um, I don't see any reason to mistrust the thousands of years of research and advancements that have happened. And I have personally verified that the, the maths and the physics work when doing my degrees, working in the Royal Navy, you know, engineering principles work because the maths of the physics of the universe that, that we are in work. Oh. So as far as I'm concerned, there has never been any reason to not think that the earth is a globe um yes i trust the pictures from space yes i trust what the scientists say because it's been demonstrated that you would trust these people because they've become experts in their field in the same way that you would ask a plumber to come out and trust that he is an expert in what he is doing to fix your plumbing so uh -huh. um i go with the established scientific consensus because I have personally verified the maths myself. I've done, I've traveled the world and I've never seen any reason to think it is anything other than a globe. So there we go. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you, I mean, for the rest of this, do, um, we can just go back and forward. If, uh, if you feel like asking yeah, me some questions to start with, because, uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is that okay, uh, Godless? Can we get into it? Can we get into it? How, how, do, you want to, how do you want to do it now? It, no, 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 yeah, five minutes, and now uh, we're, uh, sort of an organized back and forth, like I said before. Mm -hmm. You guys mm -hmm. can do, um, like, uh, if Spur Kismo, or Spurs Kimo. Go on, you, any way you want, it doesn't matter. Any, any way you're comfortable. Okay. I want you to be comfortable. Okay. Yeah? 
<clears throat> so uh, if you if you want to start off by addressing any one particular point that maybe Craig made or yeah, any one particular point absolutely. that supports your side, but try to keep it to one point that we address at a time. Yeah, okay. So um, gravity. You spoke about gravity. Mm -hmm. um, being a force. Um, yeah, so things fall. Um, why they fall in that direction is unknown. Um, but what we're trying to look at is the force. Can that force be proven? Does mass attract mass? Now, you have what is called the Cavendish. Okay, it's, it seems reasonable. We've got two objects, and they're going to attract. But um, have you eliminated all the other forces, wind, atmosphere, things like that? I don't think that has happened. So what was suggested is, uh, has this been done in a vacuum chamber, or has this been done on the moon? I think this would satisfy... Uh, a lot of people, if you were able to show mass attracted mass uh, in an environment where there was little influence uh, to obviously make these objects gravitate towards each other, fight. Okay, so um, mm -hmm. if, if a Cavendish experiment was done within a vacuum chamber, that would mm -hmm. kind of satisfy your... Um, uh, th satisfy the the fact that you mass attracts mass. Well, it would certainly eliminate uh, uh, a lot. Yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, and obviously, yeah. when the Cavendish experiment was first done, you know, the, the story of it being in a barn and everything, it you know maybe there was a lot of things affecting it. But the the Cavendish experiment yeah. has been repeated constantly, and uh -huh. the the method of, of doing the experiment has been improved upon constantly. I don't yeah. know if if has anything if they've done it in a vacuum chamber or if the instrumentation is within a vacuum chamber um i agree with you that would remove any you know at least a lot of other things any influences, right? yeah yeah I, I agree that that would be you know um something that would clarify right, a because, mass because we get accused we get accused of denying and dismissing all of the heliocentric models experiments but it's simply not the case the case is that we're not satisfied with the order the way you do things because we believe well there's going to be influence it could be magnets um you know when we want you to eliminate all the variables uh that could be the cause of why uh, these balls are attracting to each other you know these uh, these objects right yeah so knowing that knowing that how can you be satisfied then therefore that uh, gravity is a force uh, mass mass attracts mass and so on if you have not never if you haven't if you've never observed such a thing hmm? Um, there is other experiments that have been done aside from the Cavendish experiment. In fact, the the the, the mass attracting mass can be proved mm -hmm. with a simple digital scale if it's accurate enough. Um, this mm -hmm. is something we did um, during basic training in, in in the Navy when we started our engineering degrees as part of a principle. Um, you hang something off a digital scale, um, a very very accurate one, like to you know one thousandth of a gram, and uh, with a heavy lead weight underneath it mm -hmm. and it shows how much it weighs and then if you put another massive object underneath it um mm -hmm. you put a much more heavier lead weight underneath that the mm -hmm. actual weight of the object being hung increased by like one one thousandth of a degree i mean it probably wasn't even that much you know but that was what it was it was able to register that it, it went up that much mm. and that kind of proved that adding something there increased yeah. that gravitational force uh, to what was already there with the the earth underneath it well you see again you know i mean it's not something that i would just deny outright but i would say can this be repeated on a scale that is satisfactory okay it's also all good and well saying yes we have an, uh, an experiment or a test or you know and uh, we have results here but unless you unless you can show that it's uh, demonstrable. So you can say every time, mm -hmm. uh, look, these are the results, uh, satisfactory, um, you know, conclusive, then I, I cannot see why you uh, would go with um, the assumption that gravity is a, is a force. Well, in the way that you're describing it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when, when you move, you know, just, yeah. just to clarify, because I know probably Anthony Riley will be listening in his last video, of the fact of gravity being a force. Um, obviously, it can be described as a force within Newtonian physics, but that's not necessarily right. what it is right. um, within the model. I just want that to be understood. You know, mm. um, Technically, the way it could be described is it is the, 
the warping of space-time which manifests as a force within Newtonian physics. But that's beside the point. I just wanted to kind of clarify that. Right. Um, now, the reason that I... I wouldn't say it's an assumption. I would say it's an evidence-based um, decision or, uh, you know, an evidence and reason-based, you know, direction that I've come to say that there is a, a downward accelerating force right. of 9.8 meters per second squared because not only... You know, with the Cavendish experiments, no, I'm, not arguing, like that, I'm not, that's not the hard. argument. I'm not arguing with you about things falling. Yeah. Yes, things no, fall. No, I, yeah, I understand. I was just trying to to explain that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've done other things other than just you know the Cavendish experiment and mm. other things of saying that mass attracts mass. It's when you do the physics um, and mm -hmm. you 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 do the cal part of your physics degrees is um, right. you know proving that you can demonstrate the the principles that you've learned. So you mm -hmm. do experiments with different weights and springs, figuring out torques and tensions and everything. And you have to demonstrate sure. that these things are correct. And one of the variables in all of these is that downward accelerating force. Mm -hmm. um, so. No, but we're not trying I, I, to prove the downward force. Yeah. We know things fall. What we're trying to prove is that mass um, attracts this, mass. This, this question is uh, related to things like the vacuum next to the atmosphere. Now, I'm not trying to get into all those things, but I'm just saying this, this type of gravity mass attracting mass, we would need uh, proof of that, like absolute okay. proof. And what have, as, as the Flat Earth community, what attempts have you done to mm -hmm. prove or disprove that mass attracts mass have you created your own experiments have you done your own no, we, versions? Have, we have an experiment we have the cavendish but the uh, cavendish okay. needs to be done under the right conditions and no has flat attempted to do this yeah no one's disagreeing with cavendish uh, thus far as far what we're saying is we disagree with the parameters mm -hmm. that you do cavendish under Okay, and I, I I understand that you disagree, and you mm -hmm. know it comes back to the argument of um, having an independent variable that you can manipulate and things like that, right? Mm, right. Um, yeah, but um, my again, my question to you as a flat earther is: mm -hmm. Have you, or mm -hmm. have any other flat earthers, tried to do this experiment under better conditions that would meet your parameters, or is no, it not, just not, the fact not, of not like, know, you guys uh, need to do it? Not that, not oh. that I know of, no. Um, two flat earthers, gravity is a magical force. So you would be trying to experiment with magic. Okay, so unless you, because it's your claim, remember, you claim that water uh, is it sticks to the board because of gravity, this force. So now we need evidence of this force. Okay, okay. so this is the point. So we're not going to try to prove something that we know does not exist. But you see? that's not really how science works. The, with, with science, mm -hmm. you have to disprove everything. Mm -hmm. If, if you are, if you have a hypothesis, mm -hmm. then the way that you would figure out that hypothesis is correct is by disproving <coughs> no, but everything we don't else. Start with a, we don't start with a hypothesis, you see. What you we start do with natural start... observation. Yeah, uh, we, I, mean, I really well, don't no, want to get not, into not, arguing about no, the way that the scientific method fight, works. Fight, but, fight. It's not yeah. just an observation. Okay, you don't just look at something and then start doing science. The observation has to be a phenomena that you don't understand that needs explaining with science. Yes. Okay. Now, obviously, things like sunsets. This is a phenomena that you guys want to know. How do sunsets work? Now, this question needs to be answered with science. It can only be answered with science. It cannot be answered with mathematics because it would be based on assumptions because you obviously right. don't know where the sun is. But if we see the sun and we ask the question, how what how is the sun setting in that in that manner? Yeah. Once again, we how would we be able to test the sun, test the horizon, test the atmosphere, and manipulate our surroundings? Okay, so the problem that we have uh, is that instead of you guys testing it, you make assumptions. You say, "Well, ah, it's disappearing over the curvature," but it hasn't been tested. So unless we can test the sun disappearing and rising, it's going to be an assumption. Now, I can't see how you can dis disagree with that. Um, I would disagree with the fact that it, it has been tested because mm -hmm. we have observed it happening from a higher altitude mm -hmm. yeah. and we understand how refraction works and we mm -hmm. can, based on the observation, you know, for instance, if we see a sun setting um, mm -hmm. uh, at the equator, right? Uh, when the sun sets at the equator, mm -hmm. it's really quick. Like the, the last okay. kind of couple of minutes, it's like, boom, the sun's gone. But yeah. if you watch the sunset near the mm -hmm. poles, it's a much more um, gradual thing. 
Um, well, think about it like this. Look at it. This is how I look at it. Okay, so you're a six foot guy, right? Six one. You're six foot. Let's imagine a guy is six foot standing at the beach. He sees yeah. the sunset. So you would have us believe that the sun is setting six six kilometers, six miles away, over the curvature. Uh, was it uh, four point hmm? two kilometers? I can't remember the exact math, but um, yeah, yeah. Between... Based on based on your height, obviously the you, your yeah. your observable horizon would increase based on your height. Yes, we 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 agree right. on this, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we see the sun set at yeah. six. But let's just go. With, let's just just say six foot six miles. We don't know the precise number, but let's just say six yeah. foot six miles. We see the horizon. Yeah. Um, are you saying that the sun is six miles away? No. So we know that it's not setting behind a uh, solid obstruction. And why would you say that? Well, you say it's disappearing behind that that obstruction. That's six miles away. Well. Technically, what's happening is mm -hmm. the Earth is mm -hmm. turning away from it. The Earth is... Well, well that's another claim. See, this is the problem that we have here, you see. I try to limit the claims to ones that we can actually um, repeat, observe, and test. Now, you're okay. going to say the Earth I mean, is uh, turning. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Okay, sorry, carry on. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, you, you've gone from gravity. You, I've, just, I've, tried to use, I've tried to be very careful. And I've tried to use science with you and say, isn't it fair to say... If there's a phenomena that we don't understand, then we should introduce science. And mm -hmm. if we can't introduce science, we should either leave it alone or, you know, work hard to try and, you know, scientifically prove this claim. And now you've yes, gone I from you've um, gone from you've gone from science to an assumption. No, now, how, um, how, okay. how, how am I okay. supposed to, uh, you know, how am I supposed to discuss this situation where you're saying the Earth turns? no proof there's gravity oh, okay there's well no there's proof. the thing if i could just mm -hmm. respond to that um sure when, sure. when, I'm, when I'm, I'm saying something it's probably best to to think that i'm not making an assumption because when i'm saying the earth's turn the earth's turning i i can then provide evidence to back that up so i'm not just saying it as an assumption again it's um if you want to apply the scientific method i've observed things happening like the sun setting the stars moving in the sky so I've come up with a hypothesis, which is that, uh -huh. oh, the, it, to me, it looks like we are on a 3D object that is rotating no, in space. Again, but I, sorry, I started to interrupt you. Please forgive me. But this is, the again, the problem. You've jumped from no, I, I'm, phenomena. I'm, I'm, jumped from I'm, phenomena. Work, I'm working well, hold on my you've hypothesis. From phenomena question to hypothesis. Tell me about your research. How have you researched? Well, that's what comes after films? the hypothesis. Well, you you no, make the hypothesis no. to, to, and then you test that hypothesis. You research and test that hypothesis to see if it's correct. And then if all the research and everything turns out to be correct and backs up your hypothesis, then it progresses to becoming a scientific theory. So mm. going but I back, would, I, that going back there, isn't, there is no assumptions there. The, the order of my thinking uh, you know, it, what is the definition of a hypothesis? Um, What's the it, definition? It is an explanation for a right. natural uh, so, phenomenon. So, look, so hold on. So you are explaining something before you've researched it. How How is that possible? No, I'm not explaining it. My you are. You're, you're giving the hypothesis. You just said yeah, you're explaining you know, no, something the hypothesis before isn't you've an researched explanation. it. Hmm? The hypothesis hmm? is what I think it is, right? Right. No, the, again, let, right, let me start from the beginning. Spurs, 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 if you don't mind, let me just uh, Okay, 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 here. guys, 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 guys. All we're doing Sorry. is arguing over definitions, yeah. and I fucking hate that particular game. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, Spur, Spurs, could, could you define the scientific method as you see it? What do you think the steps are? And then maybe we can go from there. Yeah, sure. Um In order to, you know, implement science, you would have to ask a question. It's not any question because we can know things, as we've established uh, in other arenas, that you can know things without science. So you don't just apply science to every in any question. Yes. So the first step for me would be something that looks uh, like a phenomena that needs explaining. Um, so then we would do some background research. We can't explain, I, I cannot explain um, this sunset without actually researching. What is research? Researching is, um, you know, observing every horizon from different angles, different positions, um, repeating, uh, looking at the, the atmosphere, uh, optics, magnification, all these types of things. So then um, we would construct a hypothesis. 
Um, then we would test this with an experiment, of course. Um, and then we would um, draw a conclusion. That's that's the steps for me. So what's happening here is you are explaining well, no, something. Hold on, hold on, Spurs, Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you've laid out what you think the scientific method is. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 fight to flat Earth. Uh, do you have any like, issue uh, issue with that? Issue with that? Yeah. The, a hypothesis isn't an explanation. Um, a, a hypothesis is an idea that needs testing. You you don't do a bunch of research and everything to get your hypothesis. Your hypo like you observe a natural phenomenon, and based on that natural phenomenon, you have a hypothesis. And for instance, I see the sun setting and the stars rotating in different directions based on where I am on the planet. So my hypothesis based on that is that the Earth is rotating around what is happening. So then yeah. I would research and test that hypothesis to see if it was correct you, you don't the, the, the no, hypothesis there's nothing wrong with what you're doing there's nothing wrong with this apart from the order the order because what when i look at the definition of a hypothesis it tells me a supposition or proposed explanation made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation that's so exactly what i just really, said instead of you researching you have limited evidence and you're making an assumption and well, well yes like, like it's that but then aren't we just agreeing with what i've just said that the the hypothesis is something based on limited information mm -hmm. so you don't do but a bunch that, of research that, to get your hypothesis science. excuse me that's not science that's not the scientific method your starting point did we bypassed... just agree that that was i'm confused oh you bypassed uh fight you've bypassed the research no that's the research the comes no, after no, the no. hypothesis right Hold on, hold on, and, hold on. Let me step. Let me step in here, Spurs. I, I gotta call you out on this one, man. How can you test a hypothesis if you like? How can you do the research or whatnot for the hypothesis unless you already know what your hypothesis is and know what variables you're testing for? Like you're making very vague kind of statements there about what you want to test, and it seems like you're formulating a a hypothesis sort of and then doing all of the tests and experimentation for that and then you're saying you're generating the hypothesis i think that's where the disconnect is going here well, no, the is, for you're me, not actually describing the scientific method yeah i'm describing the order of and the well there's one thing about the scientific method is that um, not every scientific endeavor, endeavor needs to apply every step of the scientific method, nor does it need to apply them in that particular order. I and agree. You, you, will, you will find that within the definition yeah, of agree. the scientific method. But if you're trying to, if you're trying to answer the sunset question, well, then you cannot answer this with mathematics. You need science. Okay, I think you're saying science in a different way to to, to me. To be fair, there. Uh, and I didn't mention mathematics there once. Um, right. What I said was I observed something happening, so I came up with a hypothesis. And then the research stage would probably include a bunch of mathematics to, buck, to, to back up your hypothesis to then see if those mathematics comport to the reality of the situation. But you wouldn't just do it for that one situation. You would try and get that situation in variable uh, different ways. You would do it at different times in the years from different locations. You wouldn't just go with that one single observation and that, then yeah, make that, your, that, and, and then come yeah, to a that conclusion. Your, um, that's your research part. Yes, then, which comes what after you have the your... hypothesis. Well, okay, let's just agree to disagree. I, I right, disagree okay. with your order. I disagree with the order of things. You already um, have an explanation for something that you haven't researched. Okay, you're answering the question, um, you're jumping the gun, and you you haven't even performed an experiment to, to with the conclusion. So you're all over the place in my mind, and this is a problem that you're having, um, and this is why See, I've, I've got to disagree with you, Spiritism, because um, you know, I, I am applying the scientific method in in an appropriate way. I am. You know, you can't research something that you don't know. The the you can't research to then come up with an idea. You have an idea, and then you research to see if that idea is correct. So I I can't between my observation and hypothesis stage. Hang on, stop, stop. Hang on, 
let let no, me no. phrase let me phrase this in a way no, hold that on, a question that you can no, understand. It's not right. I'm leaving because no, 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 no. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. No, I want to. I'm going to phrase. Yes, let me respond first. It's cool. Right, respond. All right, don't switch to another topic then. No, I'm talking about his starting point. He's saying that he can have an explanation. To me, that's like a fantasy idea, like Santa Claus exists. Bottoms up. Santa Claus exists. So now I'm going to research this topic, come up with a, an analysis and a conclusion. This is how we understand you've started your starting point. This is why you, you've asked the question and you've bypassed the research. Jared, go ahead. Here's a question for you, Kima. How can you research if you don't know what you're researching about? You're researching the question that you're asking. Which is no. your hypothesis. That, that's my no. point. No, that's the topic. You're re researching sunsets. That means you research everything you know about sunsets. You go all over the world. Which you is, every which single is sunset, the from foundation. Every single angle, from every single... See, this is three against one. This is what I was saying. Jared no. should not be in this debate. This is um, what I'm saying, Mike. Trying no. to help you along, Kimo. Right, right. No, you're not. Right. I'm actually right. trying to help you along. Let's stay guys, between me guys, and Jared. Everybody then. needs to stop right, right, right now. Right now. Everybody stop. Everybody stop right now. Okay? Jared is a moderator. He is here to help the conversation along. Nobody on this side of it is trying to be antagonistic towards you. Okay, Spurs? We're just trying to get the conversation going in a direction because right now we're stalled out on this whole scientific theory or, or something that's a scientific method kind of conversation. And it would be great if we could get off of it. So Jared is just trying to get us on track to where we can move past this particular point because we get that both of you disagree on this and it's kind of a fundamental disagreement, but I mean, we have to come to some kind of middle ground area here to where we can further the conversation. Otherwise, it's going to be a two-hour debate over okay, the scientific. So let, let me let me say it like this way then quickly, right? So um, I, I kind of understand what you're saying, Spurs. So from my point of view, right, once I got my hypothesis, I would then do my research, right? And if that research didn't comport to my hypothesis, I would develop a new hypothesis and test for that, okay? I, I wouldn't just stick with that hypothesis or assumption or whatever, I would look at things from every angle, um, which is the, which is the nature of science. But I would, you know, I would, I agree with ja with with, with um, Goddess Engineer that we should just move on past this point. Yeah, I'm about, fine with about that. the actual, you know, the the sticking points of the scientific method. Um, now, do you have any physical um, hard evidence to that uh, that I can look at to suggest that the Earth is flat? What in terms of what? Um, some an observation that I can go and do a, a a a mathematical equation that I can work to comport with reality, uh, an an explanation of what gravity is if it's not a downward accelerating force. You know, is there something that I can go if I was researching this from scratch? Where would you tell me to go to to you know, get the evidence to say that the Earth is flat? Well, that's that's the, the, now you're asking the question. It would impl uh, it would require research. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't answer that for you. Um, you know, I can't tell you where we live uh, or the shape of the Earth. Um, you know, this is this is part of the problem. People simply don't want to work things out for themselves. Yes. Um, I've had to do it for myself and understand uh, using logic and common sense that the Earth is not curving. So if the Earth is not curving, uh, what shape can it be? You know, okay, logical so conclusion you, you when you watch. say the earth is not curving right that that, yeah. that that is a big point right okay so what hard evidence can you give me that the earth is not curving um have you seen the world record photograph yes yeah well uh that can only be observed uh two times a year i think it is uh, and that is because the atmosphere uh is causing it to be you know there's an open window you can see further uh, on certain days, uh, you cannot see uh, that mountain or uh, as far as, 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 as that. So for me, that is um, proof um, that the Earth has to well, be flat. Well, well can, can we not use the word proof there? Because one major thing about science, and 
I really would like people to quote me on this, is that science doesn't prove things, right? We have evidence no, this, that suggests. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, well, this isn't science. This is uh, what we call self-evident. If something is self-evident to you, uh, science is not required. That's how we can know things without science, you see? Okay, so I would fundamentally disagree that we can know things without science, but that, that's just how my mind works. I would always need to how... get deeper into the meaning and explanation of something. Well, you so, know your name. You yes. know your name. But did you know your name through science? Um, I know that my parents chose that name, and I know that they used chemical connections in their brain. Yeah, but you to just said you can't those... know something without science. You know your name without science, right? Yeah, but then you... you that that isn't where I would stop. If I wanted to know where my name come came from, I would then mm. research why my parents chose that name, what particular reasons and experiences they had in their lives to make that name. I would then mm. maybe research the um, chemical reactions and thought processes of the brain behind coming up with a decision like that. I wouldn't just stop mm. at that's my name. You know, I would look no, at no, the no, why I, is I that agree. my name. We're saying that we can know things without science you know godless's name without science yeah because he told you so you now know this you didn't know well, it before you over the internet you know, yeah, you yeah, now I, know I, it, I, right? I, get, I get your point but um yeah there so is, what my point is that science is introduced because it's required why because there's phenomenon that we just simply cannot explain with our senses it's not self-evident to everybody yeah sunsets sunsets are not self-evident to everybody uh -huh. most people think it's going down when in reality it's going away now how do we test this we need science See, we didn't you just science, then make an assumption which is yeah. what you've been accusing me of doing. So you just made the assumption of, in reality, it's moving away. Where it, that's exactly what you've told me I shouldn't be doing. Yeah, but we've tested this. Have you not seen Rob Skiba's video where he tests the sunsets uh, with the lens? So the atmosphere acts like a, a lens. We know why the sun goes down. That's the point. We research. We've researched this. Yeah, but uh, he, we have um, a, we have his an research was flawed. Yeah, quite hold fundamentally. On. And... Hold on. Hold on. Again, you just call wrong because we have an experiment. Again, this is so unfair on no, your side. No, no. Well, let, let me explain why I've said that because okay. um, mm -hmm. look, I've I've seen the video. Yes, yeah. and I noticed mm -hmm. about five variables that could have been eliminated pretty easily to get a more accurate um you know descript you know idea of what was going on the camera height could have been higher there wasn't so the lenses uses the there the math really wasn't quite right no, but, but look, you know, there was a lot of things okay. that weren't done now all right that is one explanation but what no, i would but the do order, well, let, let, please, this, let me finish then. one sec right that is that is the conclusion that rob skiba came from the information mm -hmm. that he had based on the experiment he did but I right. wouldn't just accept that just in the same way that I wouldn't just accept something else. Mm. I would go, well, why is that? And look into it right. more. And I would try to right. eliminate a lot of things like glare of the lens and atmospheric refraction, etc. Uh -huh. And then I would repeat the experiment and I would compare the results based on what was happening when the variables were there and weren't. And I do not feel that Rob Skiba sufficiently yeah. removed ve enough variables to make a determination of what was happening. Yeah, yes and no, maybe. But what happened was, like I say, there was a question, sunsets. Okay, yes. so research was done. What research? That means the atmosphere, the horizon. So what Rob Skiba found out through research, you see, he found out that the atmosphere acts like a lens. Okay, so once he knew this, once he gathered more information, he could now form uh, or construct a hypothesis with this limited information. So what he did, he said, okay, if the if the atmosphere acts like a lens, can I replicate that? Can I test this with an experiment? And lo and behold, you saw a experiment that replicates exactly what we see. Now, now if, he's wrong, flawed, um, if he's wrong, uh, if, if, he's wrong though, if, if he's wrong, if he's wrong, if he's wrong, can you provide a working demonstrable uh, working test to show how sunsets work on a ball yes you would do exactly the same observation whilst removing the variables which weren't removed for instance red's rhetoric has done an observation of the sun 24 hours throughout the day with a solar filter 
zoomed in maximum in the frame and it shows mm -hmm. that the sun doesn't change in it doesn't shrink and no, no, I'm talking like about that. an experiment so, an experiment well, do you that, have an experiment okay well, that is an experiment to determine the angular you know the angular size uh, no, that's an, that's not, that is research, that is observations. We want an experiment, not another observation and not more research. We pass and how is that different to Rob Skiba's observations and experiments? No, because, because Rob Skiba didn't make an observation. He um, tested his hypothesis with an experiment. That's something that you... What, what was the... the oh, yeah, but the whole thing about the atmosphere being a lens, he was so wrong oh. about that with the way that the angles were... At the, I mean, surely you've seen... All the videos oh. explaining how wrong that was, and this is no. my, this this is my point. I have seen one debunking video on that. What uh, I've well, seen. Well, okay. Well, let, let, let me stop wrong. you there. Let, 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 let me stop you there, Spirit. Hey, concept. guys, 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 come on, come on now. Yeah, let, let me let me let me stop you there. And that's that's the thing. You haven't looked further into it. You've gone. This is what Rob Skiba says, and mm -hmm. I've seen one debunk video. I've seen a whole bunch of debunk videos about that experiment that Rob Skiba's done. Yeah, but the beauty uh, with Rob Skiba, anybody you, you can... Keep in, uh, I haven't, please, let me finish sorry, with sorry, my point. Sorry, right? sorry. My point here is that Rob Skiba did an experiment that was flawed. In the same way that, um, that Robotham did a flawed experiment for the original Bedford Level experiment because he didn't do enough to remove atmospheric refraction and things like that. So the res results and the conclusions that were gathered were skewed because it was based on a flawed beginning. Now, if you do an experiment, you need to remove all the flaws and the you know, the variables and stuff. But what Rob Skiba did, did was he went with, oh, that's what it is. That's my experiment. That's the conclusion. There was nothing oh. to improve what was happening. I don't think we can use that how, as an example. Okay, okay, okay. How would you, how would you have done this test? I would have um, done it from multiple different locations. I would have no, had no, 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 many no, 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 no. different... I'm talking about the experiment. Rob Skiba produced an experiment to show the people, look, look outside and you can replicate this at home. Now I'm asking you, where did he go wrong in this order? Question, he researched, he had a hypothesis, he did a, an experiment. What and was, explain the experiment to me, Spurs. What, Rob Skibas, you haven't seen what he's done? But no, the, I, I, uh, yeah, for I, now, I, I just want to hear you explain the experiment to me. So there was a question um, that was asked, sunsets. Is the sun setting or is the sun moving away? That's the claim. That's what we you just said I made the, that claim, right? Right. So yeah. we asked that question. So we researched and what we found out, we've gathered a little bit more information and we found the atmosphere acts like a lens so well, arms that, that 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 was my question where's mm -hmm. you explain where's to me in, where in video. explain yeah but i want to hear it from you because i've i've explained to you my issues with it but i want to well, hear never, you explain to me to be, what the well, experiment me. i'm Spurs, never please to please just right i'm gonna ask you a direct question you know, a direct thing and i just want you to, to please right. do what i, I ask okay okay I'll, I'll you say try. you say rob skiba well mm -hmm. no rob skiba did this experiment to show that the mm -hmm. atmosphere acts as a lens please could right. you explain to me that experiment i didn't say that i didn't say that don't put words into my mouth i said after research he's found out that the atmosphere acts like a lens what research well look on the video he's speaking to a scientist and the guy says the atmosphere acts like a lens that's research is it well, that would have been one part of the research. Yeah, I'm sure there was more, but he brought that forward. Spurs, I'm sorry, say, but you're imposing the head of a lot of double standards here. Why? You tell, because you are just letting Rob Skiba do no. experiments based on observations and people saying this and that, but I'm not allowed to do anything approaching anywhere near the same. You can so do that. I, I'm, I'm still at waiting for you to answer the basic question of what is your hard evidence that we don't live on a globe? You say... There's no curvature, but there absolutely is curvature that has been observed many, many times. So I'm I'm waiting for you to prove to me that there isn't curvature. But I've just asked you, how would you like me to do that? I've said to you, the sunset sunsets uh, are proven to that doesn't, uh, right, right. I'm sorry, sunsets don't answer the question of is the Earth curving. What observation can you give me to prove that the Earth isn't curving? The the sun setting doesn't prove the Earth isn't curving. So what kind of evidence to prove that the Earth 
I mean, again, water. You, you, well, you're the one making the claim the Earth isn't 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 curving. Yeah, so we observe flat. You observe a flat. I observe flat. What reason I, do we, me and you, both of us, what reason do we I don't have? Observe flat. Yeah, what reason do we have to believe or think the Earth is curving? Because it's quite clear when you actually observe things. Well, then show me. Show me why why you believe it, and then we can see screen share something why you believe the Earth. I mean, we observe flat, so I don't see any reason for you to we, think. You keep saying ah, we yeah. observe flat, but I can. Sh I, there's a whole bunch of reasons why I say we don't observe flat. I'm a sailor. I'm a, I was in the Royal Navy for nearly uh -huh. a decade. I spent a hell of a lot of time at sea, and I can tell you right now that that shit ain't flat. What's um, not flat? Did you document what you saw? Did you document the curvature? Well, the um, machinery that I was working on that you know takes into account the curvature of the Earth certainly would, that's for sure. What uh, takes into account the curvature? Uh, the um, navigation systems of the ship, the uh, weapon systems of the ship, the communication why would they systems need of the to, ship. Uh, take, why, would they, why, would they, why would that be necessary? Otherwise, they wouldn't know where they were going. Yeah, but why would they take into account the curvature to know where they're going? They're just going straight forward. Would they need to know where things are? And what, that, the... Are they going downhill? Or something no they are going mm -hmm. around straight the ahead so yeah so why would they need to... to take into account the curvature if they're going straight ahead steam straight ahead so the boys full steam ahead well you're going to want to know what's there so your navigation systems are going yeah, to take into account again, the curvature why if you're not going downhill if there's no descent why would you need to know there's curvature that's a, a very backwards question the, you you can argue that there is a point where things disappear so you still need to know what is beyond that point now obviously way way in the past we talk about the <clears throat> you know seeing ships disappear bottom up or appear with just the mass first or whatever mm -hmm. but nowadays we can actually look and use our technology to see further than the horizon and the technology that does that takes into account the curvature of the earth using other things to help see further. So I think I've been very supportive and, you know, not kind of denying everything. I've, you know, I've looked at all of your experiments. I've asked you, do you think it's fair? And, you know, I haven't, I don't think I've, I've said anything fallacious here. I've said what, I've said what we observe. I and you, we both observe flat. You're I saying- No, I disagree because for instance, um, well, the, the observations that Miles Davis has done of the mountains show uh -huh. that the, the Earth isn't flat because those mountains are way lower than they should be. Um, yeah, but is there I'm, a chance? But again, is there a chance it's an optical phenomena? Is that um, possible? Um, and if you can tell me an optical phenomenon that can do that, that can literally make a mountain disappear that much, then I, I'd love to hear it. But currently... There isn't well, one. And let me tell the, you. Let wait, me tell I, you. Let, I haven't finished. And okay. what we know about the way that light reacts with our, interacts with our atmosphere, what we know mm -hmm. about refraction, and what we know mm -hmm. um, about the, the distance and size of, of the Earth comports to the observations that were made. So, uh, I mean, just looking, you know, I could stand on that hill where he took that photograph and just look and go, well, that mountain is lower than it should be. Mm-hmm. So, that, no, but again, that's, 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 you're, you're not going to hear any disagreements from me. But what you're going to hear is, is can we be sure it's not optical? Can we verify the question that you're asking right now? Yes. But you say yes. You say so. We, we, know, how I, light, I, we know how light works. Unless you, there is some property of light that you can tell me that I don't know about. Well, is there a law for light or something? There's many, yes. Like what? Well, like the wavelengths of light and the way that the different wavelengths will refract within our atmosphere. Uh, the laws or theories? No, they're not theories. These are things that have been proven. We, we, we've, we can isolate a single photon. So we know exactly what light is. That's how femtophotography works. Yeah, I mean, we obviously know, you know, we can, um, you know, probably manipulate light and work with light. But, you know, I don't think we have a law for light. We don't exactly know how it exactly works because when we look at no, like no, we, we absolutely do. We know exactly how light works. It travels at 180,000 miles per second and based on the color of the light has a particular wavelength. Uh -huh. we, we know right. how light propagates. We know how light is created. We know how photons interact with other things. We know how quantum superposition, um, you know, affects 
things based on observations. So for, for you to say that, I, I, you know, I would completely disagree because there's been plenty of experiments and things done to show that we do know exactly how light works. So much so that an entire area of photography has developed around looking at single photons and things. So, right, yeah, I mean, um, I can, yeah, like I said, that's, that's, you know, of course, sorry. technology, you know, we're able to work with it and things like that. But things like the ships, ships disappear in bottom first. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't explain that. I can. Uh, well, your explanation is curvature. But again, we know the Earth is not curving. So uh, if you're uh, sorry, sorry. Curvature... Again, you know the Earth isn't curving. But that's the thing, yeah, right? Let, let me point out one big thing here, I suppose. And it's not just mm. you. It's every single flat earther. Uh, okay. I'm going to do an impression of a flat earther right now, okay? Well, no, it's definitely not that. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely not that. That's what you're saying to me. That's what every flat earther says to me. All right, you can't no, no, say I, look, it's definitely not something unless you can give me hard evidence to show that it's something else. But every time you give well, me also, evidence, also I if I could. Away. Sorry, if I could interject, Snell's law is a law concerning light and how it refracts in that's different what mediums trying, yeah. and whatnot. So that's that's a pretty good one to throw out there. The blood moon, for instance, is a great explanation of how our understanding of light works because we could explain the color of the light by the refraction of the sun going off our atmosphere and scattering the red more than the others. So mm -hmm. we know how light works. There is laws. There's maths and you know things that back up that the mass comports to reality we know how um atmosphere and the density of atmosphere will change the the you know the way that light is is bending so for you to keep saying can you prove is is it not an optical phenomenon i can tell you that it's not an optical phenomenon because i know how light and the interaction mm -hmm. with between light and the atmosphere works okay so why should i believe you because you can go and test these things for yourself um, how? What, by... what can I test? How? What? What should I test? What to? Like Rob Skiba, he has this experiment, a test that anybody can test anytime, you anywhere told, around. You the, still around. explain to me what. So I'm, asking, I'm asking you, was. why should I trust you? Why should I believe you? What test can I do to verify what you're saying to me right now? Well, you can go and build a receiver for light waves yourself from scratch if you feel like it. That'd take Is that quite feasible? A lot. You'd, you'd have Is it feasible? to. That, that's feasible. But, but... It's feasible. You'd have to go and get the, um, uh, a degree in electrical engineering. Uh, you'd have uh -huh. to source the raw materials. You'd have uh -huh. to make the transistors, the capacitors, the circuit boards. Um, you would have to uh, create a functioning uh, laser receiver. You'd, you would have to do all these things yourself. They are possible right. because other people have done it. Just because you don't have the skills uh -huh. to do it yeah. doesn't uh -huh. mean that it can't be done. It's the but same. Then I would, yeah, I would say that's not science because science is for everybody. No, Your no, 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 absolutely, one hundred percent. Children do science. A students do science everybody does science so if you're if you're trying to say that you have to jump through hoops to do science i think most people don't want to know they want to be able to test but that's not what science is sometimes to well, be able to test you need mm -hmm. to be able to understand what is happening and develop the mm -hmm. a correct equipment to perform that test you, you, okay, you so just just because you can't do it with what's in your kitchen cupboard mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's not science you know you can't you, you know, from the materials around your house, you can't go and build a LIGO detector. Doesn't mean that the LIGO detector isn't science. That's not how science works in any way, shape or form. Well, science, as I understand it, is something that is repeatable, testable and demonstrable. And if you, you go and do those things, it most certainly is repeatable, demonstrable. You just need to gain the skills and knowledge and understanding to be able to perform those repeatable experiments. Or we could just see. Uh, 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 yeah, but then what are you going to know? I'm sorry, but that's that's the problem here is that, oh, well, I'm just going to go with what I can see. But you need to go deeper. And sometimes to go deeper, you need to have a better understanding. Yeah, but if you would had done these tests um, to show people, I think, you know, you wouldn't have such a hard time proving that you live on a, a globe that's spinning it's the fact that you you're not able to demonstrate and that's where i say the I, I, this but is I why i demonstrate it in fact one of the projects that i'm working on is building a mechanical gyroscope from scratch that mm -hmm. will show a precession of 15 degrees you know per hour um, um I, i'm doing a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff at home that i will plan to put on my channel and my the reason i'm doing this is to show that 
a lot of things you can do. Uh, if I could interject here as far as the science that you can do, uh, I say that in quotes, by the way. Um, so Bob from Globebusters, he has a ring laser gyroscope in which he tested and showed a 15 degree per hour turn of the earth or drift. Um, uh, it, the, the gyroscope registered a 15 degree per hour drift. No, that's not true. Um, no, it is. Yeah, yeah he is. said that they registered that. So yeah, that could have been know. the ether. We're not sure exactly what was the um, ether does not exist. It, it's except, been disproven by science. Here's the problem with that claim, Chemo. Is no, uh, Bob no, himself Bob came out and hang, the last hang on. Well, he explained. Hang on. Well, he explained on. Well, I, I'm not let, lying. Let just say what he wants to say, and then we get back to so, it. So, so why can you interrupt everyone else, but we're not allowed to correct you, Chemo? Keep that in mind. But here's the thing to remember. When Bob released the information unknowingly while he was talking to someone at an event that a documentary crew was filming at, he actually explained the extra steps they went to try to isolate it. And no matter what they did, no matter how they tried to isolate it, they still got the 15 degree per hour drift from an apparatus that was not moving on the workbench well, and I here and do. here's the beautiful thing about a ring laser gyro you don't need to go with the twenty thousand dollar one that they had available to them with fiber optic cable and a screen and a couple other middling parts that you can get your hands on yourself you can build one and get the same results okay but um you obviously ring laser gyro it's not a mechanical thing like a basic mechanical gyroscope and the thing is that a basic mechanical gyroscope, if accurate enough, will still register that 15 degree per hour you know, shift. So there's no way that if a mechanical gyroscope is registering it, it's the, the ether or anything else. Can we agree on that? Uh, it detected something. Um, you know, no, no, no. no. Um, um, if a mechanical gyroscope registers a 15 degree per hour shift, we can agree that is not anything other than what's happening on the ground right a mechanical no. gyroscope that's not going to measure anything in the sky that's just attached to the ground so if that registers a 15 degree per hour shift there is no other explanation for that there if the even if the ether existed it wouldn't affect the mechanical gyroscope in that fashion well, you know, well, uh, if this is an experiment that you have, um, you know, like I say, um, well, actually, there's plenty on, on YouTube that, you know, that I am basing my experiment on. I've, you know, I've seen other people do it and I thought, well, you know what, that's something that I can do myself. So I'm getting the raw parts. Um, I've contacted uh, someone so that I can use their machine in shop to, to create what I need to do it. You know, and again, this is something that you can do yourself as as a flat earther if you really want to do research from an intellectual no, no, no. The, standpoint the test, the test the test that i would be satisfied again i wouldn't be satisfied with this test if you're going to do a test the test that um, would be satisfactory would be to fire a laser from um, the equator and uh, one from the north pole and have it return back to the earth and we should get um a slightly different reading if the Earth is actually turning, so where, where the, are you firing they, these lasers let, to? If, we, if the Earth is actually turning, the laser at the equator, when it returns to the Earth, should be a lot uh, slower than the one from the north. Okay. The north. Yeah. Area. Where are you? You're, where are you firing these lasers to? You're saying return Look, to the Earth. What are they bouncing off? Uh, off the ionosphere. Right. Right. So, if you're able to perform this, I wouldn't waste your time with gyroscopes. I would, I would try to perform that, that, that's, the that's, that's, laser test. Yeah, yes, where you can. Would... This is this is ultimate proof. This is absolute proof. If you would get the reading from the equator, um, a lot slower than the northern area, the North Pole, um, this would absolutely prove. Of course, wouldn't it? it would show that um, the Earth is turning. Okay. You so, say. have you done this? Have you attempted if... to do that? Have you? No, so I don't believe the, the Earth is to do it. No, well, I don't no, well, the there you phone. go. There you go. There you go, Spurs. I don't believe the Earth is spinning, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to do the experiment. And there, no, 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 I'm talking. No, you, minute, you know, I'm fight. talking. You will shush. Okay. okay. There right, is right. the problem. You don't want to find another answer. You've literally just told me 
no, mm -hmm. I, I don't believe the Earth's spinning, so I'm not right. going to do that experiment. That is intellectually mm -hmm. dishonest and 100% no. not how science works. No, when I do all. something, I would not go into it with the mindset of, I believe the Earth is spinning, I don't believe the Earth is spinning. I would go into it my, with the mindset of, what will this experiment show me? But you don't give a fuck what the experiment is going to show no, you. Because okay, you hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I can get a clarification. Down, calm down. All I'm hold saying on. to if you. If I can get a clarification, can I get a clarification on something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Spurs, what you basically just said was, mm -hmm. hey, here's an experiment that you can do, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not going to do it because I already know the results of it, but I have not done it. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm saying that I haven't done this test, but what I'm saying is if you believe the Earth is turning, I wouldn't waste your time with um, ring laser gyro and things like this. This You want to see if the Earth is actually turning. So you need something like lasers uh, positioned at the, at the equator and okay. lasers positioned so at if the... That's why, if that's the way that you think you could pr prove it or disprove it, why mm -hmm. haven't you attempted to do it? Uh, I've just thought it just now, actually. Uh, I could well, do it, yeah. It's possibility. Wrong, but, I mean, uh, lasers work and stuff. The reason anyway, why but... I said it is because I'm saying that I'm not. I don't want you to do a test, and then it, people you come back and they were not satisfied. You need to do things where flat earthers put forward and say, "But if you prove it this way, like for example, Anthony. I don't know if you know Sleeping Warrior. He had. <laughs> yeah. yes. a, you know, yeah. So he had an idea that to prove. I don't think he's ever had an idea in his life, but carry on. To to to, to prove the sudden point. You would need um, to satisfy Anthony. Okay, you would need uh, three observers in the South: one from South Africa, one from South America, and one from Australia, uh, simultaneously observing this southern point. Okay, this would satisfy him that there is a southern point in the South, 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 South area, South southern. You know, you understand what I mean. And this would satisfy him. Right. He's I'm, not going to do. I'm he's not going to do sure. this. Why not? Why because, not though? No, why, because why would if, he you not believe, that? if you believe there is a south, uh, south pole or southern point, then you should be able to provide three observers, one in those areas, like I just said. Yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure it's been done, to be honest. But, no, but, but, but my point here, here is, mm -hmm. if that is what would satisfy Sleeping Warrior, one way or the mm -hmm. other, mm -hmm. why hasn't he arranged for that to happen? Why is the onus on us? That's why would he do works. that, though? Why would he chase Santa Claus? Well, because the question of whether the Earth is flat or not seems to be in discussion. And he didn't say. Uh, he didn't uh, say uh, that. Uh, wait, no, don't interrupt me. Did. Don't interrupt me. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Right. The, sorry. Question, sorry. You know, the question on you know, about all these discussions is: Is the Earth flat? Yes or no? And if that is something that, in his mind, will satisfy that question as to whether there is a South, etc., why is he not arranged for that to be done? That is the problem. He doesn't want to know. Because otherwise, well, we did try. We did try to. to we did try to. We did try. We asked Wolfie if he would participate, and you know, we put we put it out there. Ball Earth has said, Globe Earth has said, yeah, we would get this done. Hasn't been done. It will never be done. You will never find three observers in the south able to see the southern crooks cross at the same time. Just like you won't be able to put a laser right. at the equator, a laser at the north, and fire them and Bear get me back. Just one second, right, guys in the chat. Um, how many of you there are in the uh, Southern Hemisphere and would be willing to help us do this? Because you would convince at least 30, 40% of the Flat Earth community if you were able to prove the Southern Point with three, ob not two observers, has to be three from uh, Australia, um, South America and South Africa. Right, that, okay. there in the south. I'll do that. Hmm? I, I will get that done. All right, give me a week. Oh, you heard it here. Done. You heard it here. You heard it here. Fight thinks uh, that he will be able to get three observers and uh, shut the flat Earth down overnight. I think this will shut down the flat Earth down overnight. So you can say, look, if, if I did is... that and I got three people to observe the southern, you know, the uh, Sigma Canis from the, point, the, yeah. the, the, from those three places. If I did at that, same, would, at the same at time, the same time, time, exactly the same time. Uh, wait, are they all going to be at night at that point? Let me just. It doesn't matter. We want synchronicity. It has well, to well, be you're going to need to all be night to be able to see the stars. Wait, I, I'm just thinking I there is going to be yeah. a point. Uh, there is mm -hmm. going to be a point where one will be in dawn. And one, yeah. So that should be possible. 
right? If I can get those, if I can get three people from those positions around the world, yes, will you admit the Earth is a globe? No, you will have Anthony Sleeping Warrior, a globe Earther. Okay, well, we all know that Anthony's a liar anyway, and that won't happen. But I, I can get that done because I know for a fact I've got people that watch me in Australia, South Africa, and South America. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, again, I'll, we've been asking I'll put, this. I'll put a call for, out to again, we've, been, we've been into this for you know, you know, five, six years now. We've been asking for this observation to verify this sudden point that you. You're telling me for five, six things. years you haven't been able to organize it yourself. You telling me out for five, six years you haven't found. But again, we're not going to chase. Earthers. It's not our claim. Fight. We've never claimed aha, there is a sudden aha, point. But there's the thing. There's the thing. On our side, we would try mm -hmm. to prove both. We would go, well, if that is what the flat earthers are claiming, right, well, let's do an experiment to see if that's true. And that Red's rhetoric has been doing that for, like, since he started his channel. He's been doing what the flat earthers have, at, have wanted to be done. But there is no flat yeah, earthers. Yeah, I we, we, there's no flat that, earthers that, that will try and that, disprove the flat earth. Spurs, 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 mm -hmm. man. You got to let fight the flat earth finish, okay? He was talking. There Please is no him flat finish. earthers that will try and disprove the flat earth or work from a neutral perspective. Flat earthers will go into it of a, I think the earth's flat, so pff, fuck the rest. And no, but admit, I want to show respect this. to Red because he's one of the few globe earthers who are active. You know, because what we're trying to say is this is the first time in my reality or in my um, day and age where the earth has actually been researched. We've just been told what the shape of the earth is. It's never been researched. So Red's out there trying to, you know, counter the flat earth, but he's going to be with a great difficulty, of course. But yeah, he's shown that uh, something is in the sky, uh, like the ISS. Um, but how we understand there's nobody actually in the ISS, Red, if you're listening. Uh, maybe there's something up there, but people inside that's uh very very questionable and um that you would have to wear uh, red uh, this is just a red you would have to catch the people doing a um spacewalk or you know when they're fixing something if like you could actually you, show you want that. to film them from earth doing a spacewalk something like that to prove okay. that they're um, actually... well we would yeah. need to really advance our optical technology to be able to do that you understand that, right? That they're we have, we have telescopes that can see uh, Jupiter. Are you telling me we can't see the ISS just above our heads? Get real. Uh, okay, so look, there are fun. It's not that we deny everything. We don't deny everything. We just ask you to verify everything. That but there's my problem, Spurs. Is that we shouldn't have to verify everything because we're not the ones making the claim that the Earth isn't a globe. Well, it's not a globe. How do you, what, why, why are you saying it's a globe? What makes you think it's a globe? This is the problem. All the now. evidence just... I presented you with tonight, the millions and millions and millions of pictures and videos uh, from space, from not only professional organizations, government agencies, but amateurs as well, um, mm -hmm. the comporting evidence to back up that all those satellites are real, all the experiments that I've done to confirm that gravity is a thing, and if gravity is real, then the Earth is a globe, because the flat mm -hmm. earth can't be a thing if gravity is real. All of the evidence that I can ever find, and I've given you a whole bunch tonight, which you've just hand wave dismissed. So no, not you... at all. Don't say such things. I've said to you things like Cavendish. Um, it needs to be improved. You need to find okay, uh, a better well, Why place. hasn't a flat earther tried to improve it? Again, why would they? Again, because why it's the, what the flat earthers are the ones that need to well, prove listen, that listen, either if way. I said to you, if I said to you, pink unicorns exist, would you try to prove they do? Uh, if it was a um, you know a claim and I was yeah. deciding to try and prove it one way or another, I would mm -hmm. research into whether pink unicorns were real. If that was right. an actual you question that people were asking. Be serious, be serious. Would you waste your time researching pink unicorns based on what you know? If there was an, a claim that that was a reality and there was a scientific research being done into it, then yes, from a intellectually honest standpoint i would have to research if pink unicorns were a thing okay but you're 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 you're, you're, you're making random things that aren't really the point here the question no, on I'm all our lips is to, is the earth flat want, or not you want hold on you want us to research the southern southern point yes. you want to research gravity yes and to us yeah, but again to us it's self-evident we don't need science to prove why things are disappearing. We understand perspective. We understand. So, um, no, no, you don't understand perspective, not in the slightest. And I, you've had this conversation with Reds, I know. So yeah, well, right now, what is the law of perspective? 
No, no, I'm just saying that uh, we understand how things are disappearing. No, uh, that's not what perspective is. Well, uh, again, things are disappearing um, because of the horizon, because of this at this layer of atmosphere. And it, you know, they are and things again, to store. Spurs, you're you're doing the same thing that you keep telling me not to do. You are making assumptions. You are saying this is why it's happening. This is why it's happening. It's self-evident. I can see it. To me, it's self-evident the other way. All right, but I will still research either way. I didn't say uh, perspective to get into uh, a new. Uh, you, you know, you're just, uh, you're just missing what I've just said. But anyway, no, I understand what you're saying. That's why I'm kind of saying it's this thing because I actually, um, you know, this is not, uh, you know, something that I want to discuss right now because it's very late here. It's two o'clock in the morning, and yes, uh, big we, kind of, we could kind of, um, you know, wrap it up in some way. So because I think it's been good. I think we've come to a good understanding that, um, you know, we need to improve. The, the tests, the tests, yep. the science. And, and I would say to you that um, that's how science works. Tests are improved all the time. Um, methods are reevaluated and reassessed. Um, right. Things are, you know, for instance, the Cavendish, it's redone <clears throat> all the time. You but know, not, it, in, it, not in the right conditions, though, fight. That's the problem. Well, see, I would disagree because the conditions have been changed along the way. But then no, that, no, that's my you point. If, to... if you're saying it's not the right conditions, then you need to do it within the right conditions yourself. Otherwise, you can't say, well, you haven't done it like that, so it's not right. Why didn't, why, why didn't you just do it in the right conditions in the first place? Um, well, because... Why would, you, why would you allow, like, atmosphere or wind to affect this important... You're proving gravity. Not just, you know, any old thing here. You, this has to be so rigorous. Yeah. So and now they tend to be in enclosed system, you know, in, in closed system. I'm not sure if there's vacuums or stuff, but you, you, do, you, you, the, you do know what the Cavendish experiment is and the way it works. You, you, the, 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 for, the force of you know, mass attracting mass is so minute, you have to exaggerate it massively to be able to measure it. Mm. okay okay listen i cannot have you talking about rigorous experiments when you thought of an experiment virtually ran it in your mind and just unanimously uh, uh stated that it disproved the earth rotated no, but like, you cannot you talk you about having rigorous God. tests in the God. same breath God, do you disagree with that test the laser test do you think that's a bad test I I don't I don't know because you made it up off the top of your head and so yeah, I mean I don't I, I didn't make it up. I would I would figure out where we live, right? So if I'm on. thinking, if we if we are thinking, how can we figure out if the Earth is actually spinning? Now, don't you think firing a laser from the equator and then firing one from the North Pole would prove, without any shadow of any doubt, that the Earth is rotating? The setup as proposed is designed to fail. There is no reflected medium up there to force the beam to have a return path. Well, well, because to be, here, to be fair, because here is to be, okay, to be fair, worry. there is going to be some reflection, but the dissipation of the, no, no, the laser stop, stop, would be stop. so extreme. Well, uh, as well, well, okay, are, look, mm -hmm. well, look okay, so so you can shoot a laser and hit the the reflectors that are left on the moon by the apollo uh moon missions and they will reflect back and you can measure the distance to the moon and I, then i'm sure that you could augment that in a way that you could you could determine like how how fast the earth is rotating or at the very least how fast the moon is orbiting the no, no 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 all you need to do is send up two satellites right one above the North Pole, straight up at say um, fifty thousand feet or higher. What, what do we need? To, what do we need to put the satellite at? Then you put another satellite with reflectors at the equator, and then you fire your laser at these satellites. Okay, now, right. Um, mm -hmm. What what you're proposing here basically is you you want to see a difference in the you know with the light returning, yeah. So right. at, at the equator, you would see. You know, it would have moved slightly when when the beam returns. Yeah. Now, hold on. I know you're going to say it doesn't. Then send the satellite further. Send it so it's one day. Oh no, no, I wasn't. Gonna, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to talk about things that we already have that kind of do that. I mean, for instance, the GPS system works based on where the things are and how fast they are traveling. You know, you have to have at least kind of like three satellites in communication at different points in the sky. 
mm-hmm. and you know that whole system wouldn't work if the earth wasn't spinning and the data that you would receive from those satellites that are already in place w- would show you i mean they have atomic clocks in them that can track the difference in time because of the velocity and everything so mm-hmm. what what you're proposing is already kind of in place with systems that are there to help us navigate the planet so use it then to show that the Earth is rotating. Let's see you can a... show that if you just gather the data from GPS systems, it would show you that. No, we want an experiment. This is, has to be um, an experiment specifically for this. Okay, well then, as flat earthers, you need to arrange that experiment. Or Why are you the... saying that? What, 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 I don't understand. Why do... Prove the flat Earth to me. Prove the dome. Prove the wall. Okay, so... Uh, the reason why we say this, if if I can interject here, is that the current consensus among everybody else is that the Earth rotates once in a 24-hour day, mm-hmm. right? And we orbit around the sun and all, all that good stuff. Yeah. That is the current consensus. If you're going to challenge it, that's fine. But you have to come up with the experiments that disprove it. You have to provide the information that disproves it. We don't have the burden of proof. You do. And this entire stream, you've done nothing but shift the burden of proof and move the goalposts and all of those logically fallacious things. So that is why. That, that's how burden of proof works. I mean... It, and, and I know it, in a way, it might sound like just kind of going, we don't need to prove anything. But again, I can present proofs of the, the Earth is spinning. It's just not ones what? that you are going to accept. Yeah, it has to be satisfactory. I mean, it has to be satisfactory to you. It's been to satisfactory everybody. to everybody else, but not to you. No, everybody I'll else can you. interpret no, the no, data. No, no. Don't every- say it again. You're saying everybody else, everybody else. They do not know about this experiment. Everybody else has been told. If everybody else knew about this experiment, they would question it. No, that's the, everybody else mm-hmm. has they access do not to. Know the fact about, they do know not that... know about this experiment. Just you and a few of the people who have looked into this experiment. But most people the, have this experiment idea. that you've just come up with. Sorry, the experiment that you've just come up with. You mean? No, Cavendish. Oh, nobody. Cavendish. Well, oh no! Yeah. Everybody, everybody who actually has looked into mass attracted mass knows what Cavendish is. Right, but they don't know that the parameters are not correct. They just think, oh, they must know what they're talking about. So we've exposed that actually you don't know what you're talking about, and it should have been done in the correct environment. Right. Well, if then, and again, if you think that's the correct environment, then you are the ones with the claim that everything else is wrong you are the ones that need to do that experiment in what you consider the correct environment and see what the results are. No, again, if you want to satisfy... No, 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 Spurs, you're, you're shifting burden of proof again. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to let you just keep shifting claim. the burden of proof. Oh, yes, you are. You are making a claim that the Earth isn't spinning and the Earth isn't a globe. You are the one making that claim. We are not yeah, the we... ones claiming it. We, yeah, we are prove. we yeah, are the ones okay, that okay, have okay, the scientific okay, consensus okay, and have had okay. the evidence and the reason based yeah. so we can behind. prove that the earth is not a globe through observations but that doesn't but prove it, anything because we've got observations on. that prove that it is a globe and way can more than you can i finish so if you tell us the size of the earth you give us a number you say it's twenty four thousand kilometers all the way around so we're like okay fine so that would mean that it's eight inches per square mile and the mm, earth no, should not all the way. Hold on, let me finish. Whether I'm wrong or right, let me finish. So we again. So it doesn't matter what the number is. The number, if you tell us twenty-four or twenty-five thousand miles all, all the way around, people will say, "Ah, okay, fine." If that's the number, then according to those numbers, I should be able to only see so far or yay far or whatever. So what people have found is that when they go out with their cameras, they've looked at the numbers. And they can see a lot, lot further than what you say uh, we can see. And that's the problem. That's no, what you're up against. And there is where I disagree with you. For instance, mm-hmm. the way that all flat earthers seem to misunderstand how the curve calculator works. When you actually do the correct calculations and take into account everything that's happening, it always comports to the model that we have. The claim that, um, oh, well, we can see further than we should be able to, or, oh, well, that's a problem with your model. That's Mm -hmm. ridiculous because these things have been created based around our understanding of the world that we live in. 
they aren't just someone's random thought and write down a random number. This is what we have found out by observing what is going on. No, but again, you said I'm, I'm not listening to you. I'm saying if you tell the people the Earth is 25,000, what does that mean? If you say 25,000 miles all the way around, can we start? Can the people now start to do calculations on what we should and shouldn't see? Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. So if we can see further than what, a, say, a six foot man can see further than what you say we can see, well, then the numbers are wrong. Well, Something is, no, but something then you wrong. have, but that's where you just go, oh, well, it's wrong. So, well, but, well, but that's, that's when the you're, not, you're that's not thinking about question. atmospheric refraction and stuff. And when you take these things into account and do the maths that take those things into account, you can never see further than you should, ever. Why is the world record the world record? Because you can see a lot further than you're supposed to. Because of the particular atmospheric refraction on that day. As the photographer has quite clearly stated, you even right. stated that that only happens once, maybe twice a year. And that was yeah. a particularly you know, good day for refraction. And when you do yeah. the math, I've, and I've, I don't have it with me right now, but I've done the math for that. What you mm -hmm. see is that it is bringing up the curve by less than 1.2 degrees at the extreme. So if you need to tell me that light doesn't have the ability, uh, sorry, that you know, to, to bend 1.2 degrees in extreme refraction circumstances. Yeah, looking at a 20 mile mirage. Yes, and I've done, I've, as I've explained to you, I've done the math. And when you, do the, when you, and when you do the math based on how far the, that photo shows and mm -hmm. what the earth is, it shows like a, less than a 1.2 degree discrepancy, which can be more than explained by atmospheric refraction. Well, you know, like I say, uh, we're not satisfied with that answer. Um, oh, well, that's your problem. So then you need to go and find a satisfactory answer. You can't just say, that's not good enough. I'm sorry, Spurs. Stop shifting the bird and the proof. No, we're not shifting. We're yes, saying are. that we have the proof. We have observations that observations go... Observations don't prove anything. I have observations and I have way more than you. No, you have calculations. I have like, observations and I've explained about a thousand of them to you. Yeah, well, equ equations and calculations. Um, no, okay. no, no, Spurs, this Hold is on. my words. Observations. I have plenty of observations. But I also have calculations and physics and experiments that back up those observations. You don't. Well, okay, sorry, okay. Sorry, Godless. Go ahead, Godless. So, sorry, the, the, you're crapping on mathematics a lot. And, um, I mean, being an avid person in, in mathematics... Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I do have to take issue with that because, like, for instance, let's just take speed. Um, I mean, are you saying that you don't trust our speed calculations, like any speed calculations, like the calculations you do when a ball is pitched or uh, the radar gun, uh, uh, you know, on, on the highway? Uh, do you not trust basic calculations of speed, like when we're trying to determine uh, if train A leaves from city B and train C leaves from city D uh, at so-and-so speeds, how long will it take for them to crash? Like, do you not trust those particular things like at all? Like you, you just don't think math at all can t tell us anything uh, about math, reality. Of course we need math calculations. Of course it has uh, applications. Okay. But remember it, it depends what you're applying the maths to. So if you're applying maths to tangible objects, uh, you know where things are. Well, of course, sure. But where math fails uh, you uh, is when you try to um, calculate or measure uh, things like the sun, the moon, stars, so on and so forth. Um, you're making assumptions. Okay, but in the my calculations of that I explained to you uh, about that photograph, I didn't use any of those things. No, I'm just. I didn't use the distance. Him. I used tangible, observable. No, I facts. know, but I'm I'm just saying to uh, Godless here. That there's nothing wrong. With, it's not like flat earthers don't like numbers or maths or something like this. It's the way you're using these numbers. I mean, we prefer you to go from you know one, two, three, four, five. Measure something from A to B. Like you said, sixty-nine miles, one mile, two mile, three miles. You you haven't calculated. Okay. 69 miles you've measured the distance and we're satisfied with that the sun where is it the moon where is it stars where are they 
We thought, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So using basic speed stuff, we can determine that the moon is like 238,000 miles away from us. Th this is knowing the speed of light and all that other stuff. Are you saying that you disagree with the use of math when it disproves your ideas, but you're fine with math or I guess technically just measuring shit uh, when, it, when it can confirm your own ideas? No, not at all. And like I said, if you knew where the sun was, let's say you actually went to the moon, the moon landers were real. You actually landed on the moon. So we would know for sure where the moon exactly is. So obviously when we measure or take measurements to the moon, we would, you know, you, you would know these things, but we don't know where they are. So I, again, I can't see the argument. If we don't know where something is, we get... Yeah, but, but that's the thing, using yeah. the basic maths that works, we mm -hmm. can easily calculate where those things are. You know, you I can I can look at the lights in the sky, for instance, Venus, and look use the observations of parallax and yeah. knowing what speeds and stuff are to calculate how far away from us it is, and then using that I can use maths that's been proven trigonometry to easily calculate the distance to the sun. This isn't just random things that people have made up. This is observations that people have done and then done maths based on those observations that comport with reality. I mean, well, you, know, you know, it's kind of basic, the whole calculating the yeah, distance yeah, to the again, sun using it, Venus, it, right? You, everyone's done that. I'm not being silly here. Oh, Every, well, everyone's me, done that. For me, you know, maths are useful. It's applied in uh, particular areas. You cannot but apply just not it to, where you want it. No, you can't apply it to something where... You, like, for example, you cannot triangulate a rainbow. Why? Because you don't know where it is. Where is its precise location? You will just never be able to work out where these things are. The same thing is with the mm. sun the moon and the stars and anything it's, that's up there it's uh, not the it's, same though because a, a rainbow is very different to something else what? a rainbow is refraction of light and you know the, the light interacting with the the droplets in the atmosphere and stuff whereas the moon and the sun and venus and things <laughs> are tangible physical objects that we have easily calculated the distance to hundreds and hundreds of years before we had this technology just right, by observing them Okay, fine. You've calculated. We, we, I, you know, if you just measure, we've gone to the moon and confirmed it. Yeah, just measure the actual distance, and you know, they, I think they, they did when they flew to the moon. They measured it and calculated it as like oh, a I'm quarter of a million miles. Things. We can do How would you measure the distance uh, to to an object if we can actually go there and know where it is? Um, so you're saying yeah, it's too far know. away to actually measure physically yourself? Then pff, doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, look, again, if we went to the moon, then, of course, we would know the distance because we could say we've traveled so many miles. OK, we now, haven't... as mm -hmm. um, a physics student, literally mm -hmm. one of the first things we did was um, bounce lasers off the retro reflectors on the moon. This experiment no, it's is far something. Too late. Wait, 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 wait. This it's experiment is done by thousands of people every single year. Those retro reflectors wouldn't be on the moon for us to do that if we didn't go uh, there. Look, I have a, a wealth of uh, knowledge and information about how the moon I lands. I doubt that but very what, much. What I'm hoping, though, fight, 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 please. What I'm hoping is that if we can leave this on a good note where we're not screaming and shouting and these type of things, we can have this again. Yes, we can uh, I would again. like that once my channel is fucking... Can I just say, Absolutely. whoever fucking porn, porn bomb... Excuse my language, it's not my channel. Whoever porn bomb me, you know, just seriously, beep, beep, yeah, that was beep. Grow up. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think it was even a flat earther personally. I think I know exactly who it was, and they know exactly who it was. And um, yeah, that, well, that was terrible. I, I think we should probably start wrapping this up. Um, Godless, is there? Any yeah, let's super chat. Good for note us? because uh, you, you've, you've left this with a very good subject about the moon landing. Like I said, I have a, a plethora of information about how it was a hoax. We never went there, but I don't want to start you off. But we can yeah. uh, we can well, start um, that. On. I mean, I, I know I am fighting the flat Earth, but I am looking at other things, i.e., the moon landing, yeah. anti-vaccine, and things like that. So, moon landing, I would very much like a discussion with you at some point. Absolutely, uh, you will be uh, astonished. I'm uh, sure I will. Uh, G, is there any super chats for us? Oh, there's a few. Oh, you've got a few. Oh, oh, there are there super chats. Whew, I'm so glad that you asked. Okay, so super chat time. First, we got Chris Kelling. Here's to hoping FTFE gets a quick resolution and strike removed. Yeah, um, I really hate uh, that 
uh, you know, that happened to you, man. And like everybody else said, that whoever whoever's been porn bombing people, they just need to stop. Like that's not cool. Um, Paul Reap five dollars says thanks for covering this. Ge, you are a scholar and a sci. Uh, n- wait, not not saint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Um, let's see what one nerd. Vz- uh, I promise uh, not to make any bold jokes this k- time. I kind of feel bad now. Okay, I'm over it. Love you, Craig. <laughs> uh, Stringer News 1 says, Thanks, Godless Engineer, for stepping up to help. Hashtag community. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you to Craig Essek uh, for his donation. Uh, he didn't have anything to say, but we do appreciate that. Um, Gregory uh, Schmidt says, Flying at 39,000 feet the other day, saw a curve. Hmm. What, what do you have to say about that? Uh, uh, ski, ski, Spurs ski Sorry. Yeah, you, you can just call me uh, Spurs or you can call me Kima. Or Skidmark. We normally call him Skidmark. Can I call you Cancer? Uh, well, well, you can call me what you like. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Okay. So, Spurs, what do you think about 39,000 foot and seeing a curve? Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, you know, I, I always enjoy when people say, um, you know, I see curvature from 30,000 feet, 40,000 feet. So there's one way to verify this um, is to is to pan across. So if you have a video uh, and you actually see curvature, so you would pan across. And if the Earth is actually curving, you should actually see the curve going down, 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 and things like this. Um, yeah, I'll get into this, actually, what I'm talking about. I'll be able to demonstrate what I'm talking about. I'll show you a globe and draw a ruler and, and show you what we expect to happen. Yeah, okay. Break out the crowns. <laughs> All right, uh, then we got the Geek Room. Is my buddy Celtic67 hey in here? Got a question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what that question is. Did you eat the dog dick yet? <laughs> Did you eat the dog dick? Did you do it? <laughs> There we go. Uh, one, Wait, nerd, <laughs> one nerd uh, uh, also did another one saying this chat needs to be more super. Um, one nerd also said, I have outsmarted your slow mode, buddy. Checkmates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris Kelly again, uh, tripping the light. Fantastic. Uh, and then one nerd again uh, said, slow mode this punk. <laughs> Uh, Gregory Schmidt, his answer to everything, science is mean. Skiba! Uh, <laughs> like, why did why did you reference Skiba so much? Like, is Skiba just the one flat earther that you watch all the time? Or mm, Well, I watch Skiba. Yeah, of course, I watch uh, a lot of flat earthers. But uh, what was interesting about Rob Skiba is the question about sunsets was answered in, I feel, in the correct order, in the correct manner. Question, research, hypothesis, and test experiment. What better, exactly. way, what better way to answer a question, right? To show the people that I've researched, the atmosphere is or acts like a lens, and I can demonstrate this. Except there's a problem with his conclusion. Since he used the bottom half, the lower half of a Fresno lens, he is saying that the atmosphere gets thicker and more dense as you go up, which is demonstrably not the case. Okay, next question. Godless, please. I can, can actually confirm that. I have a friend who sends weather balloons up for his shits and giggles. And as the balloon goes up, it expands because of the lack of pressure. <laughs> I have to... I, I, I love the, the Fox News like shift in, in focus. Like, all right, that's ne- next question, guys. <laughs> yeah, don't ask um, that one. Uh, one nerd says, you need sharks with lasers, damn it. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, that was in response to Red Pill Philosophy being in the chat and having his little, whole like 60s villain laugh going on. Red, Red Pill's um, got a, a thing with me at the moment. He's like, he won't debate me in this situation because he thinks it's babysitting. So he'll only do it one-on-one. Basically, he wants it on his channel, blah, blah, blah. So I'll pop over there some next week at some point and make him look silly. I mean, he's got that mustache that makes him look silly anyway, but, you know. <laughs> you got to ask him to twirl it, man. Uh, <laughs> look, Red Pill Philosophy, post up on your channel just a video of you looking dead face into the camera <laughs> and twirl your stash, man. 
that's all I want to see. Put like a, an old <laughs> grainy, you know, black and white film filter over it. Silent movie type yeah. villain. <laughs> um, Trevor Robinson said contribution for your next bottle, GE. Uh, thank you for that. I'll def I'll buy I'll buy a few six packs of Bud Lights for that. Um, I have to say you should have got a lot more drunk. <laughs> Uh, Demonic Davros says, give this to fight uh, as I feel he deserves it. Plus, why do we have to disprove our science, but he doesn't? That's a good question. Why do we have to disprove uh, like our consensus, uh, but you don't have to disprove your own flat earth? Spurs, I think that was directed at you. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Just uh, go for it. So shoot that again. Sorry, say that again. Why? Uh, why why we... is it? Sorry, go on, goddess. Well, like in in in, in science, in actual science, we yeah. try to disprove whatever we're whatever hypothesis we're working with. But it seems like for you, you don't have to disprove it. Like you seem to do things in order to prove your hypothesis or prove whatever idea you're trying to spout, not disprove it. So I'm kind of curious as to why you do that. Well, I think we're disproving the globe disproven the heliocentric model <clears throat> but but disproving a go... does not prove b yeah and if you won't go the extra steps to disprove like the things that you've said about the cavendish experiment um, the way to disprove the globe would be to take your objections do the experiment with your objections and then see if the result is still the same then speaking of the you cavendish... would be dis disproving the globe Speaking of the Cavendish, I actually posted you a picture at your request uh, and a couple links to a Cavendish experiment within a vacuum chamber. Okay, cool. All right, I'll check that out. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a look at that uh, for sure. All right. Uh, Gemma Scout, she said, GE, it's not even Friday. Why do you platform people who have been proven wrong? And I would say that uh, I enjoy these kind of conversations. I enjoy trying to figure out how people think about certain things and what people think. Uh, I find I find hearing so, what somebody thinks is a lot more interesting uh, at times. But I also love the... Uh, information about either why they're correct or why they're wrong. So that's why I love these conversations. Um, uh, Lewis Hackett, uh, he said, I expected to hate FTFE because his intro is terrible. I don't know. I like your intro, uh, but I didn't. Uh, FTFE made a lot of cogent points and didn't fall for a lot of chemo's tricks. Uh, you have uh, you would have won the debate, FTFE, if you never turned your camera on. Sad but true. Can I finish? <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but I don't know. I enjoy seeing your face. Lewis will be happy now you read out his uh, super chat message. Yeah. <laughs> uh, AJ Ravenwolf, Spurs, would you please explain what perspective is? Could you do that, Spurs? Uh, yeah, but, well, not now, not now. Um, I but, can. Yeah. Alpha equals 2 arc tan times g over 2 r, where alpha is the angular size of the object, g is the actual size of the object, and r is the distance to the object. Because uh, we're still trying to, we're still doing, we're still conducting research, actually, on uh, on what we're actually seeing, whether we're seeing things, the claim is that, because uh, what we hear from a lot of the ball earthers is that we're not really seeing objects. So again, that needs, that needs research. Uh, but just to give you a definition on perspective, uh, wouldn't do uh, the research. So, he, so here's a hint. If you don't have a workable explanation and definition of the term, mm -hmm. stop using it. Well, this far, like I say... Uh, if you do not have a definition or explanation of the term, mm -hmm. stop using it. Well, like I said, that's the question, perspective. Uh, is it perspective? We're researching that question. And hopefully we'll be able to answer that with science. Okay, and okay. So it as an answer. If you don't know how it works, don't use it as an answer. Uh, uh, like I said, okay, okay. I, I, so, uh, the, the current mathematical solution that, and I have to say, I love the juxtaposition of, of FTFE reciting the exact formula for calculating perspective and then you're like we're still researching it <laughs> like um 
I, I have to say that whenever whenever you complete your research phase of whatever special scientific method you get going on here, uh-huh. um, you you need to have a at least a comparable model in order for it to be taken seriously. So that would include a mathematical model. Because what you got to understand is, is that we were told perspective. We were told ships are disappearing bottom perverse because of curvature. Now, no. you have to forgive us and uh, be patient while we investigate if this claim is actually true. So to be word- fair, word- the current yeah. modern flat earth movement was started in 1812. Um, so you've had a pretty long time to kind of get this research at least started. And if anything... <laughs> it's gone backwards because the research that that I'm going to say it with air quotes, the research that you are doing now is still the same research they were doing when he formed the city of Zion in 1812 and made it illegal to say the earth was a globe. The difference is that it's honest research. We're not just going to assume things because you've you been assuming demand, things all night. Well, well, because you demand and require an answer, you know. Oh, most spirit. certainly, I do. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So we're not going to just assume something. But we're you going are assuming to... that the Earth isn't a globe. No. Sadly, again, I was told the fire was hot. I didn't listen. Well, again, fight. We both observe flat. There is no. no I, don't. I have spent months at sea, and it's most definitely not flat. I'm sorry, but I do not observe the Earth as flat. And you telling me that I do is not going to change that fact. Well, Neil deGrasse says the Earth Earth's curve cannot be seen from airplanes. So how you're seeing curvature from the Earth, um, this is why we have... This is why... Not with me, necessarily. I don't think we're going to have a problem. But you're going to have problems when right, you... So here's, here's my one question about Neil deGrasse Tyson. Is Do you think everything Neil deGrasse Tyson has ever said is 100% accurate? In it's general, not gospel, you not gospel, can't really right. see the curve, but if conditions are right, mm-hmm. then you can see a slight curve. And in fact, um, you don't even have to be in the sky to, to be able to observe that. You, if the conditions are right and you're looking out at sea, there is still mm. a very, very, very slight curve as you look at the horizon. You know, this this is an observable fact. It's not just flat. It's not 100% flat. It no, looks but again, it, so but it's not. If you're, being honest, if you're being honest, all of us here, everybody in the chat, we observe. the. I mean, again, again, if you're going to say, well, you know, the Earth is curving, but the observations we make are flat. No, they're not. I disagree. Incorrect. I live in Virginia, and all I see is curvature of hills. It's okay, only okay. fucking... No, I'm talking about when we look at, at, at water, like uh, when we stand at the beach. We observe cool. flat. That's how I'm uh, describing what I'm what I'm thinking here. You mean oh, okay, horizon. okay, okay. So, so uh, Spurs, did you know that if you have a good eighty miles in your field of vision, like laterally, right, horizontally, then do you know how much of the curve you're actually seeing, like according to, uh, you know, our globe model? Do you, do you know like the percentage of the curve? One point three four degrees. Yeah, I mean, I understand the scale thing, and again, this is part. This is part of the issues. You guys want it both ways. You want to say that ships are disappearing over the curvature. So, if ships are disappearing over the curvature, that's your curvature. I can now see you. You're saying we can see curvature now. The same in the same breath, you're saying, "Oh wow, well, the scale and the the curvature is is too small for you to note." Well, it's like, well, hold on, is the ship disappearing over the curvature or it's not? What's yes, and what you are seeing well, is a it's result kind of, of the curve. conversation right there because in one hand we're talking about laterally can you see like a change in the horizon and then we're also talking about whether or not you can see the effects of the curve as you look out into the distance. So I mean those are two very different yeah. things there. But when, when we say when we say we're seeing a boat go over the curve, we're not saying there we're seeing the curve, right? What we're saying is we can see the effects of the curve of the earth. Or what looks like to be the effect of curve. Yeah, okay, so, okay, I'll grant you that. It's what looks like to be the curve of the Earth. And yeah, yeah, that okay, is where you okay, would then right. go and do further research, but, which but, has but, been hey, done. This, this is where we break down, because if you're going to assume its curvature without verifying... No, 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 that's not what I just said, right? Mm. I said right. that, oh, look, that looks like an effect of curvature. So what I'm going right. to do now is I'm going to mm. go and test to see if that is true. I'm not making an assumption of it being true. 
See, you keep no, saying no, no, I'm no, making no, an no, assumption, no, but what I'm doing is I'm going, well, that is my observation. I'm going to yeah, go test to see if that observation like is true. That. You have to research. Oh, my God. Spurs, don't go backwards again. Please, we've done this. All right. Godless, next super chat. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 We got to move on. Go ahead. one. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Reap says, good video. My brain hurts. Fuck, my, mine too. That's why I drink two beers for this. <laughs> um, Macab, Macab Mal, uh, Malfica. Maleficent, sorry if I, I think. Maleficia. Yeah, I'm sorry patrons. about that. Uh, plug FTFE's Patreon. Uh, I, I, what's your Patreon short URL? Uh, it's patreon.com forward slash fight the flat earth. Okay, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody uh, go there. I'll try to get it in the description afterwards. Uh, FTFE, you. if you can send me that in uh, on Twitter or something yeah, here I soon. I've also got my PayPal if you want to donate on that, which is fighttheflatearth at gmail.com. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then we got zero said, why did the Cavendish experiment fail? If ring laser gyroscopes show that the earth is spinning due to ether wind. Do you have like a quick short answer for that Spurs? Uh, no, no. Um, again, it's, it's still in the, in, 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 in investigation. Yeah. Under investigation. Okay, so. cool. Okay, so just to clarify here, if the Cavendish experiment failed, then the the but and the ether exists, then I'm guessing the ether would have moved it, uh, and that's what also moves the ring laser gyroscope. I'm thinking uh, is the thought there, but I could be wrong. Zero, you can correct me in the comments. Uh, sorry if I got that wrong. But anyways, Flicker Light says science is a set of rules that keeps us from lying to each other or ourselves. I, I think that's a kind of a good alternate description of science, maybe. Oh. <laughs> uh, it definitely helps us know the truth of reality, and that's what I most appreciate about science. Uh, Rivette uh, says everyone knows perspective isn't why stuff appear to curve. Uh, the real reason is grumbly flops. What are grumbly flops? Don't worry about it. We all know the grumbly right. flops, Laura. Can, right? can I ask a question to uh, <clears throat> fight the flat earth? Yes. Uh, so you, you know, you like the, the debates. You know, um, the flat earth debates are on daily. Yes. Yes, with uh, Nathan Oakley. Yes. Nathan Oakley and uh, Anthony. Will you be making an appearance? Next week, um, I, I plan to um, go on at some point, most definitely. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got an, uh, a standing appointment with Dell this weekend to go on the shed at seven, uh, at shed on Saturday, sorry. So Fantastic. I'll try and get on to the debate for, on Nathan Oakley's channel. What channel is he streaming on at the moment? Uh, the Flat Earth debates uh, currently, uh, I believe, I believe. Um, but, you know, if we, uh, you're on Discord... Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you know, obviously, be able to uh, you'll be able to message me there. Message. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. No worries. Just join my server, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll be available in there whenever. Yeah. So, wait, are, are you are you confirming that Nathan is trying to circumvent a streaming ban on YouTube? No, uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, this is nothing. Uh, I'm just trying to let's stick to the the topics here. So yeah, that's great. If you could um, just you know go on the show and uh, take that as confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just make your make your case or your claims, and that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, Godless, anything else? Yes, we got one from uh, Soundly. Uh, Chemo hasn't even searched yet, much less researched. <laughs> and then <laughs> one nerd uh, says, "I build custom furniture for a living. If it wasn't for all that math." I would have a lot of pissed off customers. I want Spurs to explain to me at what scale does math stop working? That's a good question. At what, as, at what as, scale as, as, does as, it stop? As I said, I don't want people to be confused that flat earthers think, oh, we don't need math. Of course we need math. Um, but again, it's applying, applying the math. So what are you applying the math to? Could you apply the math to calculating a rainbow, trying against a rainbow? Well, of course not. Yeah. Okay. So yes, you can. Technically you can, but I mean. Hold on, excuse me, I just finished. So in my mind, math would be pointless, useless, trying to calculate the or pinpoint precisely where a rainbow. So the same thing is with the moon, the sun, the stars, and anything else that is um, in the sky. 
So you say but pointless. Eratosthenes that doesn't necessarily used mean impossible. to bur- right? the circumference of the Earth back in three uh, BCE in the in the third century. Uh, so, but it wasn't in Spur's mind. <laughs> So, I mean, you are special pleading with this whole math thing because if you just simply did the math on, like, a, a, a circle, right? If you just did the math on the circle and you figured out exactly how, how like, much 80 miles would represent on that circle and then you zoomed in on it, you would see a flat line. Like, you would see a straight line. But you could zoom out, and you would find that it's just it's 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 a circle. No, but I so, think the, um, I think the guest I forget who asked the question, but I think he's asking. Uh, he uses math at work, right? Which is which is fine, of course. You can apply it uh, when you're at work. But if you if he was trying to apply uh, the same uh, calculations towards the sun. Well, his results would be, he would get 93 million miles. He'd be so off when we know the sun is close. How uh, close uh, assumption. How, assumption. Well, how, close, how close is a question? Because the system that we're using to calculate the distance to the sun is giving us crazy millions of miles uh, results. Yeah, but again, you realize that you just made an assumption there. But you just did the thing that you've been accusing me of doing all night. We know the sun is close. That is an assumption, Spurs. Stop doing well, the things that you keep I telling me not to because it things. is an assumption. But you again, don't things, know for a fact. Well, fight. It's a little bit different between things that are self evident. If we know. No, 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 no. I'm yeah, sorry. But you can't finish, just apply different things know, to what you want. Capriscular rays, capriscular rays, and hot spots. That's a special plead. Right? We understand how capriscular rays work and you how obviously hot don't, spots are formed. Right? I live um, just. Uh, I live in Scotland, uh, right on the Firth of Forth, right, uh, which is some amazing cloud patterns just because of the breaks in the mountains off of the uh, where Edinburgh is to the to the south and you know to the mountains towards the north. So I live in a place that is constantly covered in crepuscular rays, and when you drive around those crepuscular rays, they change. When you're directly underneath them, they're straight. Well, you know, again, you have to document this. Uh, make observations. There's a claim you're making. Uh, that's, you know. uh, that Again, that's been documented so many times that uh, your research is obviously so lacking that you haven't even come across that. Well, and even then, let's get back to the actual question that came from the Super Chat. At what level does math start to break down? Because yeah. he, that Super Chat said that he was doing the math and everything for basic furniture. My one of my prior positions, I was doing math that directly related to being able to accurately radar range an item no, no smaller than the computer screen I'm staring at right now from over 250 miles away from an aircraft. At what point does it break down? When you try to calculate things that you have no idea what they are, where they are, and things like this. Yes, yes. And in and a radar return, you don't know what it is. You don't know what it's made of. You just know you're getting a return of an object this size at this range. So at what point does the math break down? Well, like I just said, uh, it's giving you why You've given a nonsensical answer. Yeah, you're what scale scale does it break down? The results are wild. You're getting millions of light years away. Okay? Dude, that's, 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 the that's the right The sun isn't millions of light years away. Things like that. How far is the moon? Can we, can we, can we uh, move on? Because uh, 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 I'm not trying to debate this any further. I'm trying to wrap this up. No, uh, you're trying okay. to avoid the question. Yes. Uh, is there any more Super Chats, Godless? <laughs> Let's look at this red car right here. Like we got Revet that says Spurs. How do you convert uh, meters to kilometers? Right. Again, is this relevant to the shape of the Earth? You know, no, but it's a it's a super chat. He's paid to hear you answer it, so it's only fair. How do you convert well, meters to kilometers? I mean, someone's, what... someone's physically paid you to to answer. So come on. Well, he can Google. The answer he can, can use a, a converter, but, but you have all this information and knowledge, and the question was posed to you. Why are you running away from yet another question? Hold on, I just googled the shape of the earth and it came back round. 
So, <laughs> is that correct too? Oh, fantastic. And finally, Paul Reed that says, assuming starts with ass. And we've got Luke Filewalker, who's a new member. Thank you for becoming a member of the Skeptic Mafia there, uh, Luke. Woo-hoo. So, yeah, good stuff. Uh, great stuff. So I think we can um, um, headline next time with the moon, the moon hope. Yeah, I would um, very much like that um, conversation with you. Want to do it on the non-sequitur show? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll get that arranged. So I'm going to say good night. Uh, God bless. Goodbye. Thank you. Godless. Um, uh, again, uh, thank you for jumping in at the last moment, Spurs. I do appreciate that. Jared, uh, it was great to see you. And fight. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, bud. I guess that is the sign off. Oh, Goodbye, good Spurs. Yeah, good to see you as well. Catch you later. Yep. See ya. Bye bye. Oh, Holy. All right, Godless. Um, any final words? <laughs> Well, I appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Um, it's been interesting. Um, and I mean, I, I can't say that we really got anywhere with this, but um, it's just, uh, it's, it's been a thing. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's been, it's been a mind trip to be quite honest. Um, uh, thanks for because, having it on your um, channel at last uh, minute notice as well. I really appreciate that, man. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I uh, you know, I'm always here to help out, um, and uh, obviously my channel's up for use if anybody needs it. So, uh, so yeah, um, I have no problems with that. But, uh, anyways, it was fun, um, and I guess that we'll see you heathens next time. There's not going to be a, a video tomorrow morning on this channel because we got this video, and uh, you know, we'll just see you tomorrow night for a live stream. See you later, guys. Bye. I got stuff to say. Oh, yeah. Go on, oh, never mind. Okay. So, as the person who put this together, I have to apologize. Like, the pain that I put both Godless Engineer and Fight the Flat Earth through, I, at one point, I had to leave to call Jared to force me back into the show. <laughs> and thanks. I'm thanks, just thanks so for sorry. Putting it together, Pig. I appreciate that as well. Yeah. Right, we're gonna, but the we're, show will continue on to the after show, yeah. UDSA, right. in the live chat. Speak to you later, guys. Bye.